All right, hey everyone, I'm going to show you what you can get by upgrading your Wi-Fi. Now, this is for really a desktop computer up to a Wi-Fi 7 latest generation card here. I have a desktop I built. It's actually a pretty good desktop. I built it about four years ago, and it has the built-in Wi-Fi on the motherboard. And that um, motherboard only has a Wi-Fi 5 capability or the AC level. If I look at the specs on it, it has a max theoretical capability of 433 megabits per second, which in today's world sounds pretty slow, but honestly, it's been good enough for the past several years for all my usage. And my ISP, so my internet speed, has typically been um, within that range, and so I really haven't had a huge slowdown because of it, but a couple things has happened. One is I now have over a gigabit per second speed capability for my internet. And I also have a network attached storage or a NAS unit that is on a different area of my network and it's connected by Ethernet, actually 2.5 gig Ethernet, but my desktop is still on Wi-Fi. So I ran into this dilemma of do I put Ethernet on my desktop, which means I have to run wires uh, through the walls and get a cable to it, or do I upgrade the Wi-Fi? And so I'm opting to test out, I haven't plugged it in yet, this Wi-Fi. I'm hoping that this Wi-Fi can get me the speeds I need and uh, not need to run the cabling. So that's what we're going to see here. This is a TP-Link BE9300 Wi-Fi card. And as I mentioned before, it is designed for a desktop. So it's PCIe that slides in. In the box, it comes um, assembled with the standard uh, slot. But if you need the smaller size, um, I think it's a mini, uh, PCIe it does have that option as well you can unscrew the bracket and uh, replace it and then this unit has the external pad that has some LED lights so I guess it kind of makes it look cool um, but then it also helps get your antennas further away from the interference that's on the back side there of the computer and it allows you to uh, put your antennas um, up on top of your computer or your desktop or whatnot but if you do, do not want to use this, you don't have to. It is optional. You can go directly into the uh, card itself on the back side of the computer if you want to. It's been a while since this has happened, but this actually includes a file uh, for the drivers. And I guess it makes sense because if there's one thing that you probably uh, need to have uh, something offline, not internet, is for a internet card. So this makes sense. They include a little USB flash drive. I'm not sure what size it is probably pretty small but it includes the drivers that you need to install the unit um, if you need them so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pop that in the computer real fast I'll show you that and I'll show you the speed difference that I get with this unit uh, versus my older um, you know built-in one so before I get too far though I do want to say this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel and I do appreciate it if you hit that like button for this video and also consider subscribing to my channel so you can see more videos like this all right, and also a quick note is that this is not sponsored in any way. They did not send me this unit. They did not pay me for this unit. Uh, but I will put a link in the video description below so you can buy this unit from Amazon if you so choose. Now, if we look at this, this is a Wi-Fi 7 card. I actually have a TP-Link Omada system for my home Wi-Fi. So it's kind of a small business level uh, Wi-Fi system. And I stuck with the TP-Link um, for a couple of reasons, actually. But um, I'm going with this one, and it is overkill because I only have a Wi-Fi 6E capable system. So I technically can't use Wi-Fi 7 yet, but obviously I might eventually upgrade my home internet. So I might as well be uh, future-proofed here uh, for this one as well. So if I look at the max theoretical speed, you know, I'm going from today, 433 max theoretical to technically up to 5760 megabits per second on the 6 gigahertz band. That's the Wi-Fi 6E or the Wi-Fi 7 uh, band. But even on just the standard 5 gigahertz band, it's uh, 2880 megabits per second. So that's theoretically faster than my 2.5 gig Ethernet system that I have in my house. Um, and I should actually have really good signal here because I'm only about 15 feet away from one of my Wi-Fi access points. So. I'm hoping for some good speed here. And again, I have a network attached storage that I'm able to send files. So I truly um, don't need my ISP to provide that level of speed. I need it to be local to the network. All right, so before I throw this in, let me go ahead and show you a speed test real fast of what I get currently with my stock Wi-Fi 5 card. 
All right, so let me just grab a file here and I'm gonna move this directly onto my NAS. So this is going from my desktop here over my Wi-Fi that's connected to an access point and then that goes to a, a couple of switches and then eventually gets over a 2.5 gig ethernet system to my NAS. So you can see I'm getting about 30 megabytes per second is roughly what I've seen and that's consistent with what I've seen before. So I'm certainly slowed down by that Wi-Fi connection. So if you multiply that by eight, so that's uh, uh, 30 by times eight, it's about 240 megabits per second. So that's about what my limitation is on um, this Wi-Fi card right now. Now, just for fun, I will run a quick speed test here. And again, this is my internet speed, so this is gonna be obviously different, but this gives me a good indication about what I can get. Now you can see here, um, that 300 megabits per second is again kind of a um, consistent theme here. That's roughly what this computer is being uh, held to. See, my upload is really good. This is with my Elsus um, 5G Amplimax cellular based internet. I've uh, been really impressed with the upload capability of it. And this is certainly limited by my Wi Fi card again here. So let's switch it out and see what we get. Okay, there we go. All right, so one thing nice about this uh, base here is that it's actually magnetic, so it can stick to the side of your unit if you want it to, or you can, of course, have it upright and stick it to the top as well, and it will stay put because it is secure there. So this is how I intend to have it, and uh, let's do some uh, installation for the drivers and test it out. All right, so we are on the new Wi-Fi 7 card here and I'm just going to copy a file over to my uh, NAS storage again and lo and behold we are instantly at three times the speed you know I think uh, a little over 90 um, is about my limit for my hard drive itself so I'm probably right at that limit there of the hard drive Yep, very good very stable and consistent there so let's go run into a, a speed test and just see what that gets all right, so here is our speedtest.net. So now this is me, again, running on my internet service provider. So, of course, that's going to be my limitation here. But uh, before, I was stuck at about 300 uh, megabits per second. And uh, you can see now I am going over 500. And in fact, this is actually a good bit slower than I just ran it uh, several minutes ago, where I got over 800. My upload is going to be limited based off my upload capability, which is, at 140 is really fast, um, but um, you know I, before I was think I was uh, pretty close to that because I was uh, within the capability of the old one. So if I go in here to my history, you can see here um, just um, was, I guess it was close to an hour ago now, but um, I was running about 855 megabits per second uh, with that same upload. So I got a little bit slower, but that's really my ISP speed. I show that I can get uh, substantially faster speed here with this new Wi-Fi 7 card versus my older um, Wi-Fi 5 card that was really capping me around the, uh, the mid to low 300s.